Okay, um, in this video, we want to talk about different ways of arranging uh, a set of, uh, say, distinct objects. But now when we consider our different arrangements, what will distinguish one arrangement from another won't be the order of the objects, but whether one group has at least one object that's different from the other group contains. For example, suppose we have these letters. Now, let's say that we select three of them. We ask ourselves, well, how many different ways can we arrange these three letters that we select from this five? Well, the order matters. So, for example, as we considered before, A, B, C, that's different from C, B, A. Even though the letters are all the same, the orders of the letters are different, and the order matters. And we also know from our previous videos, the number of arrangements that we could make like that from these five letters, we can figure out with our formula, and that is 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial. Of course, this is 2 factorial, so this equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. That's what 5 factorial is. Divided by 2 factorial equals 60. So if we select 3 letters and we consider how many arrangements with those three letters and the order matters, we could form 60 different groups. Well, suppose now the criteria is from one group to the next, it's not the order of the letters, but whether each group has a letter, at least one letter, that's different from the other group. So these all have the same letters, so these would be considered part of the same group. But for example, if we had say A, B, C, and A, B, D. Now these groups would be considered different because this set has at least one letter that's different than this set. So these are not called permutations obviously, these are called combinations. And the question that we want to ask is this, well if we have five letters here and instead of selecting three of them and permuting them, we want to select three of them and ask how many different combinations will that make. So we can state it symbolically like this. What will that number be equal to? But more important, is there a way that we can derive a formula for this? Now here, obviously, we chose a simple example from the five different letters, A, B, C, D, E, the different combinations that we can generate are these right here. Each one of these differs from the other by having at least one letter that's different. So, from the five letters, A, B, C, D, E, there are 60 different ways that we could permute them from the five letters, there's ten different ways that we can form these combinations with them. So how can we derive a general formula? Well first, notice for example that each one of these combinations can yield a group of permutations. For example, ABC, That has, of course, just the letters A, B, C, but if we ask ourselves, okay, for these three letters that is contained in this combination group, how many different ways could we permute them? And of course, the answer is six different ways, three factorial. And that's true then for each one of these combinations. Let's just use this as, as an example here. So here we have all the combinations, we may not be able to get them all in the view, but we have them here, all they range sequentially, and each one of these now 
each one of these combination groups can give us so many permutations. Each one, of course, because it's not just so many permutations, each one of these can give us the prime number of permutations. But this one right here, the top one, we wrote it out. Here they are right here. And this two will give us three prime number, a three fat coil number of permutations. Likewise for here, 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 and here. So if we considered all of the permutations that could be generated from each one of these groups and added them all together, well, if you have ten of them, each one makes three factorial, or six. So together, they would form a set of 60 permutations. So what we can see is this. Each combination group each combination group will say makes six permutations. Or another way of stating that is if we take the number of, of combinations that we have, that's these, in this case it's ten of them, and multiply that by three prime, multiply it by six, that would give us the total number of permutations that could be generated from these ten combination sets. So, what we can say then is that we're talking about ten different combination sets here, but really our notation is this. So what we're saying then, if we multiply this by three prime, that gives us 60. So in, that's just for this particular example. In general, what that 60 is, is this. That's where the 60 comes from. So, what we can say then is that the number of combinations we can form is equal to the number of permutations divided by 3 factorial. That's what at first, I'm going to try to make more sense out of it in just a minute. So here, we have 5 different letters, we're selecting three of them, and in this case, the order doesn't matter. What makes one group or what one combination different from the other is each one has to have at least one different letter. So, we know that the number of combinations is going to be smaller than the number of permutations, and in fact, how much smaller? Well, it's equal to the number of permutations that would be generated divided by 3 factorial. The 3 is the number of objects that we are selecting. So, in general, we can say that if we have n number of objects and we select k of them, the number that we get would be equal to the number of ways that they, they can be permuted this divided by k factorial. And so this is our general formula. So for example, we were working with five letters. We'll see, let's make some room here, C by 3 is equal to this, which we know is 60 because we already did that, 
divided by T factorial. If T factorial is 6, so that equals 10. So that tells us then that if we have this group of letters, A, B, C, D, E, and we want to arrange them in groups like this, where each group differs from the other, not by the order of the letters, but by their each group has at least one letter that's different from the other group. How many can we make? Well, of course, we figured out manually it's 10, but here now we've done it analytically, and we were able to determine that, yes, it's equal to this divided by this, which comes out to equal 10. Now, there's more that we can say about this formula, but I don't think we have time to cover it all in this video. Um, come back, join us for the next video. Here's our general formula right here, but there's still a different way that we can write this in terms of binomial coefficients. So come back, join us in the next video. We'll talk about the binomial coefficients, and also we'll try to solve some problems that involve combinations and permutations. So come back, join us for those videos, and we'll try and work some more problems.